Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Mercy to the Worlds sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We talked about the battles, the military expeditions, the detachments of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. And one of the greatest battles of Islam was the Battle of Badr, which was on the second year of Hijrah in Ramadan. Now, the polytheists, the idol worshippers, were on the offensive side one year after the Battle of Badr. It is the month of Shawwal, the 10th month of the Islamic calendar. And they came from Mecca, with 3,000 men, warriors, fully armed, with 200 horse riders and knights, and with 700 men in armor to attack and invade Medina. The Prophet ﷺ knew about this from Al-Abbas. He got his people ready. They went all in an army of 1,000 men, and only two horse riders compared to 200 yeah. and 100 men in armor compared to 700 so they were underpowered yet their hearts were full of iman and belief and they were so eager to die in the cause of Allah that the numbers did not mean anything to them Sheikh I heard that the Prophet وسلم, was planning to fight in Al Medina so what happened well, we came to discuss this previously, and we said that the Prophet ﷺ wanted to fight in Medina, but the youngsters and the brave ones who were deprived from fighting in Badr because they were not ready and they did not think that there were to be any battle in Badr, they wanted to go out and meet the enemy, as this would be a sign of a, a, a bravery and only gallant people would do this instead of waiting. So the Prophet ﷺ agreed to the majority and he went out. The Prophet ﷺ went around the people of Mecca without them feeling. So he was behind them. When they turned around, they were facing the mountain of Uhud, the valley, and they were facing the Muslim's army. And behind them, to their back, was Medina. The Prophet ﷺ encouraged his people to fight. And so did Abu Sufyan. He encouraged his people to show bravery and not to retreat by any means. And he emphasized this point to the people who were carrying the flag. And the habit was that Banu Abd al-Dar are the ones to carry the flag. And in the Battle of Badr, the flag was with one of them, another ibn al-Harith, who was executed by the Prophet ﷺ. But he let go of the flag, and that's why the army lost the battle, and they ran in defeat. So Abu Sufyan went to Banu Abd al-Dar, and he, in a sense, provoked them by saying that, listen, Banu Abdul Manaf are ready to take the flag, the cousins of Banu Abdul Dar. So if you're not men enough to hold the flag, just say so and we will do the rest. And they cursed him. And they said bad words to him and they told him that you will see what we will do on the battlefield. And they were right because 10 of them 
died protecting the flag. The first to start the fighting was Talha ibn Abi Talha ibn Abd al-Dar, who was holding the flag. He was known to be the ram of the detachment. He was so strong and fierce that people were afraid of him. He was so brave and strong. So he went holding the flag and asking for a duel. Any man brave of you? Any man brave enough to come and fight me? And the Muslims held back because he was afraid. very strong and brave. And only a Zubair ibn al-Awwam, in a matter of seconds, he jumped in front of him and he looked him in the eyes and he turned around quickly and rode his camel behind him and got him to the ground and slaughtered him. So in a matter of seconds, the flag was no. on the ground and the bravest man among them was on the ground. And five of his own brothers came and held the flag because they were from Banu Abd al-Dar and they wanted to yeah. defend the family uh, 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 tradition of holding the flag. And the, fives, the, five, the other five were Uthman, Abu Sa'ad, Musafir, Klab, and Al-Hallas or Al-Jallas. They all came out, held the flag, and each one of them was killed. Four of their cousins, but also from Banu Abd al-Dar, came and held the flag, and all the whole ten were killed by Zubair ibn al-Awwam, by Talha ibn Ubaidillah, by Ali ibn Abi Talib, by Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, and, and all of these were from Al-Muhajirin. Yeah. They're all from Mecca. Yeah. And one man called Asim ibn Thabit ibn Abi al-Aqlah. He killed two of them. That's all that happened before the, the battle started? Yes, because it's in the very beginning. The, the, the battle was revolving around the flag. There were skirmishes here and there. People <coughs> were fighting, they were not watching, but the, 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 the essence of the battle was there. Asim, may Allah be pleased with him, Asim ibn Thabit, killed two of them. And he was an excellent archer. And whenever he killed one, he would say, take it, and I am the son of Al-Aqlah. Mm. He's one of his ancestors. وَأَنَا بْنُ أَبِ الْأَقْلَحِ so, Sheikh, we can say that this is the tradition of the world at that time to fight each other before the, uh, the war started? Yes, the duel was there. Yeah. It's always there that to show uh, uh, signs of bra bravery and it would add value to the uh, uh, winning part. So if your army, yeah. your, your soldier, your brave man wins the duel, this means that it's a good sign your army would do this. So it, it was yeah. tradition. <clears throat> and... Just a side question. Sure. Um, when he bragged about his lineage, is that permissible to do in Islam? It's not bragging. He's saying that it's me who's doing it. Mm -hmm. And by stating his name, this is like a trademark. Mm -hmm. So even Salama ibn al aqwa may Allah be pleased with him, and, and this might come on a later on uh, story, inshallah. He also, whenever he approached the enemy or attacked them, he would say, Khudha, take it, and I'm the son of Al-Aqwa. Mm. And the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, on the battle of Al-Ahzab, he used, uh, on the battle of uh, uh, Al-Ahzab, or in another battle which was Hunayn, yes, not in Al-Ahzab, in Hunayn, he would call the people and say, Ana nabi la kadib. I am the Prophet, there's no lie about it. Ana ibn Abdul Muttalib, I am the son of Abdul Muttalib, so that they would know. His name was Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Yet, his grandfather was Abdul Muttalib. So he's calling the people. So it's form of... It doesn't have anything to do with the lineage. It's, it only has to do with bravery and showing the people, it's me, I'm not doing it in hiding. Mm -hmm. And that is why these two men, the sons of uh, 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 Abu Talha, Al-Abdari, when they were just about to die, each of them was dying, he went to his mother, who was on the battlefield, her name was Sulafa, and she used to ask, or she asked her sons, who did this to you? And each one of them said, I don't know, I heard someone 
hitting me saying, take it and I'm the son of Abil Aqlah. And that is why she swore that she would drink wine in his skull. And she put a bounty on his head. She put a price on Asim bin Thabit bin Aqlah's head. And this we'll, inshallah, discuss when the time is appropriate for that. Going back to the, uh, the flag, it fell after 10 of those who carried it died. It fell on the ground and nobody dared to come and pick it up. And the Muslims were doing wonders. Khalid ibn al-Walid, who was the leader of the riders of the polytheist, tried three times to come from behind the Muslims through the left side of the army to attack them and penetrate them. But the archers would always return him, turn him on his back. Three times he tried and he could not do this. The army was a strong unit, the Muslim army. They were penetrating the uh, 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 polytheist. They were drawing them back and back. There were so many acts of heroism. For example, Abu Dujana, if you recall, Samak mm -hmm. ibn Kharsha, he's the one that the Prophet ﷺ gave him the sword. And he did not give it to Ali ibn Abi Talib, Umar ibn Khattab, nor to Zubair ibn Awam. And they were all brave warriors of, of Islam. He didn't give it to them. He instead gave it to Abu Dujana. So Zubair ibn Awam, who was the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, he did not like this. So he thought, that's strange. I'm, I'm a very strong warrior. Why was I deprived from this? So he said, I'm going to follow Abu Dujana. I'm going to see what he's about to do. So he did. And he followed him. And he said, I saw people flying left, right, and center in front of him. The guy just went, zoom, straight to the Mushrikeen's army, to the Polacist army. And there were 3,000 of them, fully mm -hmm. armed. But his sword was sweeping left, right, and center. People were dying. And in seconds, in minutes, he penetrated the whole army and he reached the back of the army. Abu Dujana says himself that in, I didn't find myself except at the back of the, uh, of the army, penetrating it on my own, killing these people. And I've seen someone doing bad things to the Muslims. So I put him in my mind and I went straight to him and I raised my sword to kill him and then this person cried. It was a woman. It was Hind bint Utbah and she was attacking also with the polytheist. So I wanted to kill her but then I said, no, this is the sword of the Prophet mm -hmm. I would not make it dirty with the blood mm -hmm. of a woman and he held himself back. I believe we have a short break. Stay tuned and inshallah we will be right back. Amazing stories. In this program we get to know about people of the past whose stories were mentioned in the Islamic tradition and related by the Prophet, peace be upon him. That verily us, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we tell you about the best of the stories. We tell you about the best of the stories. When we narrate a story, when we read a story, when we try to benefit from a story, what we are trying to do in reality is to go back through the steps, through the different parts and sections of this story until the story is actually completed and that we can take the actual benefit directly from the story. Sheikh Lutfi will narrate these stories in his program Amazing Stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one of the lands to come closer, the destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one whole city to come closer, to move closer to this dead person. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Now the battle has been established and the fighting has begun. Acts of bravery is apparent from the Muslim side and also acts of bravery wanted to be apparent from the politic side but it soon died when they saw that the people they're fighting were sincere and were determined that the word of Allah prevails. Before the battle took place, as we said, the defeat of one third of the army made the polytheist stronger and the Muslims a bit weaker when the hypocrites decided to abandon the battle led by Abdullah ibn Ubayr ibn Salul. Not only that, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, before the battle took place, shouted and announced to the Ansar that it's not you that we want, it's not Medina, we want our cousins. So leave us alone and nothing will happen to you. A defector, a traitor from Medina was Abu Amr al-Rahib, the monk, and he was or the Muslims changed his name into al fasiq mm -hmm. instead. And he also tried his best to call his people to obey him as he was the leader of the people mm -hmm. at the time of the Aus before uh, uh, Islam. And when Islam came, he lost all his powers and then nobody cared about him. And they also did not answer him or give him any attention. Abu Dujana made wonders. And he did not kill Hind bint Utbah when he was able to do so, though she was fighting the Muslims, because it is against the ethics of Islam to kill women, unless they are fighters. Yeah. Even in that case, Abu Dujana did not want to stain the Prophet's <laughs> sword, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, with the blood of a woman. But he has the right to kill her. Yes, she, he, he had the right yeah. to kill her, but as Zubair ibn Awam, who was behind him, he saw the, the sword like inches away from her skull mm. and then he held it back. And as Zubair ibn Awam says, now I know why the Prophet ﷺ gave the sword to Abu Dujana because if he, had he given it to me, I would have not kill held him. back. I would have killed her definitely. Yeah. Zubair ibn Awam, as we know, was one of the brave, bravest companions of the Prophet ﷺ. It was reported that when he embraced Islam, he was like 12 years, 13 years old. He was a child. Mm -hmm. And the people of Mecca heard that the Prophet was killed in Mecca. And they were not all ordered to fight. The minute he heard this, he went out of his house with his garment, not fully dressed, with a sword hung on his neck. And everybody saw him were astonished. What is this child doing with this big sword until he reached the Prophet Sallallahu and said Alhamdulillah that you are alive and the Prophet smiled and said Zubair what were you going to do with the sword he said I was going to chop off the head whoever attacked you or harmed you so as Zubair ibn Awam was one of the bravest <coughs> soldiers of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and he fought in all his of, of, of his battles bravely uh, going back to the issue uh, to the story of uh, Abu Dujana. Some who hear his story might think, well, um, he was trying to commit a form of suicide. Mm -hmm. And that in Islam, this would be something uh, which is impermissible. So what would you say? Well, killing yourself is not permissible. But charging to the enemy, even if you're on your own, this is permissible. Because they will kill you and you will infect some harm in them. But it's not your own doing. If you put a bomb in yourself and you detonate the bomb, you've killed yourself. They did not detonate, uh, uh, start the bomb mm -hmm. to go off. But if you go and charge to the enemy and they manage to kill you, you're a martyr. You died at the cause of Allah by their hands. This is similar to what Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him, and if you recall, he was the first one to host 
the Prophet yeah. when he came to Medina, Medina yeah. and he stayed at his house. Abu Ayyub al Ansari, when they uh, uh, were surrounding, um, I think it's called Istanbul now, Constantinia. Mm. They were surrounding Constantinia. One of the Muslims, with the Romans, they're back to the fortresses, so their back, uh, uh, backs are covered. One of the Muslims charged in to fight with them on his own. And the people said, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, he's throwing himself to his death. And Abu Ayyub al Ansari said, No, you've got it all wrong. The verse in uh, 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 Surah Al Baqarah, which talks about do not throw yourselves in destruction or doom, this was revealed on us, the people of Medina. Because at the time of the Prophet, والسلام, after everything was settled, Alhamdulillah, and Islam prevailed, we said to ourselves, What about if we stay on our farms? fix our lands, and try to prosper as long as Islam has been established well, alhamdulillah. So Allah revealed this verse of the Qur'an that you have to spend at the side of Allah and do not throw yourselves into destruction. In the sense, if you stay and abandon jihad, if you abandon the, the, the cause of Allah, Azza wa Jal, this would be throwing yourself into destruction. So the scholars say if you charge to an army, this is okay. Samak ibn Kharsha or Abu Dujana was not killing himself. On the contrary, he was killing people. And he lived after that to tell, which means that whenever you ask for death in the cause of Allah, when the cause is right, when you are fighting a just war, when you're not deceiving or lying, and when you're fighting under the flag of an imam, not under the flag of a, 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 a criminal, it has to be an imam where Muslims are gathered under, which is called the imam al-Muslimin, the, 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 the imam or the ruler. Then this is a just and fair cause to fight uh, under. Going back to the battlefield, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, and he was the uncle of the Prophet he was also a fierce and strong, brave warrior of Islam. He w went also to the middle of the army, killing people like ants with his sword, with his spear, with his shield. Unfortunately, there was an assassin who had only one mission in that battle, and that was to kill the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ. This assassin's name was Wahshi ibn Har. He was a slave. And his owner was Jubair ibn Mut'im. Jubair ibn Mut'im's uncle, Tu'ayma ibn Adi, died on the Battle of Badr. So he brought his Abyssinian slave, Wahshi, and told him, listen, you go with the army to the Battle of Uhud. And if you manage to kill the killer of my uncle who was Hamza, then you are a free man. I'll set you free. So Wahshi, who was a slave, he wasn't a Muslim, the only thing that he could think of was his freedom. He says about himself that he was an excellent uh, 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 warrior with the spear because the people of Abyssinia were extremely well-trained in spears and in fighting generally. So he went and he just observed what's going on. So he had only one mission to kill Hamza only. He did not want yeah. to kill anyone else. The only thing that he was after was to his freedom. Yeah. So he anticipated, he observed until he saw Hamza. He's talking, describing. I saw Hamza and I just saw the wind of a storm coming and the leaves of trees just flying left and right. He was just like a storm. And people were falling like leaves of trees. He said, I hid behind a big rock. And as he was charging to kill one of the polytheists, I saw a right spot. And I was, as he was going to hit the man, I threw my spear 
and it went through his stomach out of his back. He tried to charge at me, but he was too weak to do so, and he died. May Allah be pleased with him. They tried to attribute uh, uh, the act of inciting Wahshi to Hind. So is this authentic? Well, no, it's not authentic. And actually, the whole story of Hind bin to Utbah, of course, we know the father of Hind was Utbah uh, ibn, ibn Rabi'ah. Rabi and he was also yeah. killed in the battle of Badr. And uh, Hind was the husband uh, with the wives of Abu Sufyan. She was the wife of Abu Sufyan and the mother of Muawiyah. Yeah. May Allah be pleased with them all because they all yeah. accepted yeah. Islam yeah. afterwards. Yeah. But the stories say that Wahshi was instructed by Hind bint Utbah to kill him. And she gave him a, a certain reward. If this story is true, there is no contradi contradiction because Jubair was the owner and Hind was putting a bounty over the head as an as, as, as a incentive. But the story itself is not true where it says that Hind, though it's very famous, came and opened his uh, 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 guts and took her, his liver and tried to shoo it and she couldn't then spit it out. This is not true. Though it's quite famous, but it is not authentic as scholars say. Now, with the fall of Hamza, the normal thing would be that the, the lines of the Muslims would, would shake, but it didn't. It was so strong and firm. The Muslims were sad. The Muslims were unhappy for what happened, but c'est la vie. This is life. This is what they have, and this is what took place. So many acts of bravery was apparent in the Battle of Uhud. There was this companion who's known as Hanzala ibn Abi Amr. And his father was Abu Amr al-Rahib, the monk, or, or, or al-Fasiq, yeah. where, where they changed his name. His father was the greatest enemy of Islam. And this man, Hanzala, he was one of the greatest companions of the Prophet ﷺ. He's also known as Hanzala al-Ghasil. Hanzala, the one that was washed by the companions. It was his wedding night. And he was asleep when he heard that the, the, the whole army left to Uhud. He left out of his house without even taking Shower. the bath. The bath. Washed by the angels, yeah. you mean? Yes, well, yeah. at the moment. Yeah. He did not take a bath and the shower of his total bath. He fought at the side of the Prophet, he was so brave. He was this close of killing Abu Sufyan, the leader of, 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 of uh, the army. And as he was doing this, a man came from his uh, uh, back, Shaddad ibn Aswad, and he killed him. The Prophet tells us that he was washed between the heavens and the earth. And that's why he's known as Hanzala al ghasil or the man who was washed by the angels. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. Until we meet next time, fi amanillah. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Mm-hmm.